Okay, this is the final update. Be a lot shorter. <laughs> Very short. Um, but I'm... Yeah, I hope. I hope. Uh, so it's basically just maybe like... Um, what would you call it? Debriefing or whatever. Like a kind of a... Just afterthoughts on, on the whole experience of the Watchtower and, and being a survivor from that and everything. Um... I really do feel that it kind of, um, yeah, it was it was horrible that things could have been a lot different um, because of all the active effort. Not just the, you know, neglect is one thing, but when you're actively trying to fuck up somebody's life like they did with me and, and my sister and other people, other kids I saw in the organization, then um, that's really terrible because you've got, they're blocking other people that want to help you like my aunt or um, teachers that I knew at school, just neighbors, anybody. They, we, they would actively be blocked and train me to block them from helping or trying to integrate me into society at all and, you know, to live a, a good, healthy, proper life. So that was terrible. Um, I forget what I was going to say. Yeah, so as far as, like, uh, recovery, I don't know. This is a sticky topic, I think. But I'll mention just a few things. So one is I, in my case, I had to do this, and I would not have done it any other way. It's a good thing, I think, at my pace. So I had to confront my family when I did, the way I did. And I, I don't think it would have been right to have done it earlier. And some of that's just physical. Like when I was 15, you, you know, you can't go anywhere else. And also I didn't have enough information or enough, you know, like teenagers are all over the place anyways. You know, it was just, you know, having to face down your own par parents and everything at that time would have been impossible. So you've got to do it at the time and later, even just emotionally or it takes a lot of resources and these type of things are designed to sabotage you. That's how these watchtower keeps going. They make it so sticky and ugly that you are partially involved and therefore a lot of people, most people will feel guilty, at least partially guilty. And that's how they are able to trap people. It's a false um, guilt, you know, that, but it's been very cleverly and forcefully implemented. So, they're able to make people feel like they were responsible for the abuse. It's sort of like any abuse, whether it be whatever. You know, say kids are sexually abused, it's routinely, they feel, I've heard this, I'm not an expert on this, but they say they feel guilty and often they're, the, the attacker would be somebody the family knew, even a relative, and they kind of, I think it's called grooming or something, they'll basically prep the kid to make them feel a part of the crime. And people, of course, you know, these are very young kids, you know, so they're not actually guilty, but they feel guilty. They're made to feel that way. And that's why it's so effective for fucking them up. Um, <clears throat> so the Watchtower works on a similar way. They want to implicate people. And other cults do that as well. And I'm sure you guys know about all these uh, books out there. You know, the Steve Hassan um, and... Um, Combating Cult, Mind Control, very good book. Um, what else? Lifton. Um, he was the guy, actually, that Hassan kind of got his inspiration from, and that was a very interesting book. I read that one, too. It was on Chinese communist techniques during the 1950s they are using to brainwash people, and it, it's funny how you can see these relevant issues. So it's very similar to what they used there and what they're using in North Korea now, with some of the techniques in a modern way, you know, and this the seriousness of these issues and that it's actually involved in, in politics. Like I mentioned North Korea, but there's also um, other organizations like terrorism, you know, these terrorist, what do they call them? I forget these schools where they go, those beehive type things or whatever. Anyway. Uh, the Middle East, you know. so they, you get these um, different, very powerful phenomena if they're able to get people to do these horrible things or even have a nation state set up on that. 
So a lot of the same techniques go into the nuts and bolts of making it work in a sociological way. It's very interesting to study it, to actually break it down and take it apart because people have a sense of what's it's wrong, but they don't know how it works. And they are really, um, it's surprising to, to figure that out and very useful. So yeah, um, those are good books to help people kind of get a realization, you know, of what's, <clears throat> how it works. Um, you know, and also, like I said, you know, you got to face it down on your own terms. And that was hard as well for me. I was in a, a big rush, naturally, everybody is, you know, to say what you know and to solve it. And I had these big dreams, they're very good and pure, and I wanted the whole family together and everybody happy, and that was my goal. And I'm realizing more and more now that that's just, at least in, the, in our case here, that they're not nice people, and they didn't want to cooperate with me on that ultimately. And so um, that's their fault. You know, that's not going to be. And how you deal with that is really going to depend. In my case, I've been able to, I, well, not just making a new family and things like that, but just in my daily life, I kind of was making a new family with everybody I met, you know, and the friends I made and the things I did was really, uh, I was trying to be a, just a pure person, you know, good and live a good life. So I, uh, I think that's important to be honest you know, like that, and um, what else, I don't want to give out too much personal information in these videos, but, um, you know, I really feel for people who are in rough shape, and I would love to have, as without opening myself to troll attack or whatever like that, I love the idea of uh, Hansel and Gretel, you know, making a bread crumb trail out of the forest, or out of the witch's house, so you can get away, and I'd love to show people what I did. And that's why I'd love you to see my face and to talk with you more openly, you know, but I, I have to be careful about uh, privacy, security, things like that. But basically, yeah, you know, um, whatever. I think you shouldn't need that anyways. You can maybe figure out enough just from this video and from, there's a lot of information online now. But yeah, education is very important. Um, so yeah, what other tips maybe for people going through different phases? of being an ex-witness or whatever. Um, yeah, not just research on the watchtower, that's very important, of course, but also just in general, get an education. Like, And yeah, that's the other point that was really important, was generalize your experience. So I found a lot of people would be... Um, so it's all these issues overlap, which is really, really interesting to me. It makes it very powerful, but it's I'm tripping over myself wanting to say everything at once. I hope you get the right impression. Um, so it's kind of frustrating. And all these ideas come to me, they're very relevant. But basically, um, what was I going to say? Yeah, get an education. So there's a whole bunch of reasons for that. And I'm not just saying get get a degree so you can get a job so that you can live a better standard of life so you're not in the socioeconomic strata that tends to fall for things like cults and fundamentalist nut job Christianity and things like that because you don't have any other choices. It's like the Indian Reserve uh, analogy used earlier. You know, you get this cycle of people stuck. No, not just that, but get an education. Also, actually, primarily, I'd say because of it frees your mind, like, to learn the truth. And there's a lot of, actually, things that the Watchtower was stealing from mainline Christianity, which was itself just stealing from life, which is true. It's like, um, the truth will set you free. You know, you, these kinds of quotes that you hear from Scripture is very true, and I believe that. You know, learn and learn the truth. I mean, that's what I've always believed. I mean, what else do I want to do? Of course. I'm learning the truth, and, and I've always tried to, and um, that'll set you free. Get an education and learn how these things work. So learn how the, basically the, you know, the roots of Christianity in general, how these American, you know, late 1800s religions started, what are they similar to? Um, you'd be really surprised that you find out. Um, there's tons. I, I don't think I could even begin to try and cover it all here in this tape. Do some research on the internet. It's a wonderful tool. You know, and I said that before, the internet, ironically, which my brother was 
criticizing a few years ago. Probably changed his tune if the Watchtower weight comes out in the new article. But yeah, he was mocking it or something. But the internet, I realized, is really like the printing press back, when was that, 400 years ago or something? Gutenberg or whatever. That, it's exactly the same thing. You know, it's like, it made it easier to disseminate information. Was it all true or good? Of course not. Does that mean that, well, we should break the printing presses? No, of course not. It was very powerful. In fact, it was used to print the Bible and make it readily available to everybody, among other things, and pamphlets, and, you know, just research it. Find all this interesting information about the printing press um, was used for and, and things like that. So it's a tool to make it easier to get information, and just like the internet is now. And there was actually people, I'm sure, back then who wanted to break the printing. There was, actually. They wanted to bust up the printing presses and stop it because they didn't like people having the ability to see through things, and they would couch it in immorality and all these things, just like the Watchtower does now with the internet, and they did anyways. They were saying basically putting a negative tone on the internet so that they could get rid of it because it's providing information. A lot of people are able to find out the internet, you know, the watchtower is false through that. Just like spreading pamphlets before people could get free from the Catholic Church through Martin Luther or the other groups or people were able to read the Bible wherever they were in their own language and uh, they started to, you know, the, the church or even could be all kinds of things. There's political evil kings and people would, um, you know, be able to learn about them and break free or whatever from slavery and oppression, uh, abolition of uh, black people from Africa. I mean, all, all these things are all helped along by printing of books and pamphlets. And um, so similar with getting an education. And a lot can be done on the internet, you know, but um, yeah, as well as, you know, if you could get to college or something like that. And also just the whole, things tend to go in bunches. It's like a famous trial lawyer once uh, said that, you know, it, it's like grapes, right? So you, you tend to get things going together, and I found that very true. When I was working in construction, there tended to be a lot of people not doing anything in their life, or they were getting into drugs and alcohol all the time, fights, trouble with the law. And they're not dumb people, they were just, they're, it's trapped, kind of, stuck at a level, and so their talents get put into bad areas or they get things happening. And it, likewise, when I went to college, it was just like this breath of fresh air and stepping out into a new land. It was beautiful because of all these wonderful experiences and people I met and opportunities open that I could choose from. And uh, look at what I'm doing now. I never would have been able to, literally couldn't have come here without, never would have found the job that I first came out to and traveled without having gone to college that first year, even though I wasn't sure exactly what I was going to do. And that was very scary because I had to go into debt just to start. But I'm really glad I made that step. So part of a community or part of an attitude or part of an identity, I should say, even is important. That's also like look into good counseling, I guess, if you want to say it, or self-help, because it does help, I think. And um, everybody is. It's like having a coach or something. It's like everybody's trying to improve that's doing well and so part of the, I mean another concept is identity like I mentioned about who you want to be and what you consider yourself as and I had some very strong positive identities I wanted to fulfill and those really helped me a lot because I was able to become a much better person through it and accomplish a lot so getting out of even physically out of the situation you're in and getting away from crappy relatives and stuff like that that was going on and, and the farther i get the more i realize just how crappy they are and how crappy that whole situation was for them running me down um and yeah like i said you do it on your own terms you're the victim you now have earned the right to do whatever you want so don't feel like you got to rush in with an answer or you know answer them back or whatever when they're attacking you and don't have to pick a phone up. Don't rush off. You know, I've even gotten that habit and everything with my iPhone and with email now. Um, I'll let something, if I'm not in the mood, I'll let something sit for three days. You know, if I don't want to check my iPhone message or something or whatever. Just fuck them. I don't need that. It's not part of my job. So I don't. I'll just let things slide so I'm ready. It's, I let the, those things serve me now. 
truly, you know, that's one good way to keep not just technology in its place, but the whole dynamic when you're dealing with an abusive family or something like that as well, just to have respect for yourself where you are going to um, deal with things on your own terms. And part of that is a nice quote. I remember it's, a, it's related, but separate issue is, um, uh, let's see if I can find it. Hold on. <clears throat> I actually got it up on my wall because I remember reading it and liking it a long time ago. I remembered it. That's by Theodore Isaac Rubin. It says, are there, that's a nice picture. <laughs> are there genuinely nice and sweet people in the world? Yes, absolutely yes. And they get angry as often as you and I. They must, otherwise they would be full of vindictive feelings and slush, which would prevent genuine sweetness. Uh, and so basically, yeah, respect yourself, you know, and don't deal with them that, on those things. And, um, you know, try to make a better quality, healthy life. And um, other things, all kinds of things I found very inspirational and encouraging, you know. And it's like uh, there was another... Um, I think it was Helen Keller or something like that. It was something about to to discover new lands, you have to first lose sight of the shore. I think that was it. You know, and there was uh, other things like that that were really, a lot of really in, inspirational people and things I met along the way. And I've had some rough times. Ironically, a lot of it was because I didn't have any family support and I, it forced me into making some very hard decisions and having to, I've lost some friends too, you know, because of stresses that were put on me from, having to do everything on my own and life events too you have to go through on your own like getting married or things which normally that's why you have a family and that's why the watchtower tries to hack it all that away because they want you vulnerable so you make a good uh, slave for them because if you're fucked up you can't you don't have anywhere to go it's like my mom used to say you know we'd be um i remember as a kid i, I asked what would happen if this wasn't true i remember as a young kid and my mom she tried to instill this panic in me she's like we would go crazy we'd be like animals running in the forest like the bible says and she was serious she's like trying to instill this fear in herself and tr and that transference that concept and transfer it onto me and us you know it's like you're gonna go crazy if you don't if this isn't true so it's like not no longer about whether the watchtower is true or not it's about you're about threatening you with going crazy if you if it's not. So that has nothing to do with the truth of it, ironically, which they keep saying is so important, has to be physically true. Now it's about what? Being crazy? You know, fuck off. And um you know a lot of crap like that. Uh what else? Another concept for people struggling with this or ex witnesses. Um I've got a bunch of quotes actually I should find them, but one I remembered from uh Nietzsche too. It's like uh that's how you pronounce it. Yeah, something about to the effect of, you know, when you look into the abyss, you know, don't forget that the abyss looks back into you. So you get affected by these things you get involved with. And it's another quote, similar. Don't, it's like when you handle a piece of shit with your glove, your glove just gets shittier. The shit doesn't get glovier. And the idea is that Dealing with negative things like this just has a one-way bad effect. So if you're dealing with really crappy family or people treating you really bad that are watchtower stuff like that, don't deal with them because it's not fair. They're not being fair and it won't end up fair for you. It's All it's going to do is drag you down and try to make you dirty, like picking up a piece of shit. Your glove is going to get all ruined and... No matter what your intentions or how perfect you do it, you're going to end up with shit on your glove. And the glove is, the shit's not going to change. The, the shit doesn't get cleaner. You know, it's still shit. And it's, it hasn't gotten glovier, you know, as they say. So um, the same with dealing with all this crap coming out of them or any other people that are really a, a situation like that, which has no kind of positive, healthy point. It just starts to get stupid. And, I, and that's when I had to sort of start giving up this idea of the whole family being together and happy because I realized that's really a relationship. And a relationship requires the cooperation of the other people. I can't carry them. I can't cover for them all the time and do it. And pull a piece of my heart out and have them smashed on the floor again and again and again by my family. I just can't do that. They're not cooperating with me. You know, fuck them. 
And so you got to kind of move on, and, and, and that's what I'm doing, and I've done already, and I, I've got a really, in a lot of ways, a very wonderful life here. And, um, you know, things like kids are just tremendously important to me. And, um, you know, I don't want to deal with the crap anymore. In fact, there's a, a episode I, I forgot to mention about when I, I mentioned um, talking to my mom before on the phone, and, yeah, that last time I, I talked with her, and then the last message I had with my brother, he, somehow, they had gotten the story, because I was talking to my mom, I said it was really early in the morning, so long we talking, that there's these kids going to school outside on their bicycles, and I'm assuming, this is how, I, the only thing I come up with, my mom somehow had repeated this after I talked with her, and I said, James, James, James. After all this, and they'd been rude to me, and just, you know, trying to kill me, basically being completely horrible um, in their doctrines, you know, um, somehow they had fabricated this story. My brother suddenly sent back this snotty message, you know, the guts to talk to me directly. He said, I, oh, it's, mom said it sounded like you were drunk and heard screaming children in the back as if you were beating your children. This is how, can you believe it? This is how the story got back to them. And after I had that message, I'd had it with them. They were trying now to, well, they'd already been trying before, but they tried to ruin the next generation too with their crap. And that's what I mean about the shit on the gloves. Just fuck them, you know, I'm done with this. And um, I realized it was just getting me upset to deal with them. There's no good fruit coming off of this. They are truly not, quote, suitable fish, unquote, or whatever. They're not having good fruits or whatever, fuck them, whatever fucked up analogies they use. So, um, you get my point. So, yeah, basically try to, I don't know, be good, live strong, all that kind of stuff. And, um, yeah, um, that's all I can think of for now. So I'll leave it at that. Anyways, thanks for listening, guys. Bye.